tonight. Apple car rumors go electric, virtual reality for the kids, and the App Store wants to be our moral compass. Tech News Tonight is next. This is Twit. This is Tech News Tonight, episode 275 for Friday, February 13th, 2015. This episode of Tech News Tonight is brought to you by NatureBox. NatureBox ships great tasting snacks right to your door. Start snacking smarter with wholesome, delicious treats like apple cinnamon crave. To get your complimentary NatureBox sampler, visit naturebox.com slash twit. That's naturebox.com slash twit. I'm Megan Maroney. Let's get right to the Apple Car rumor mill. Happy early Valentine's Day, Apple Car enthusiasts. Amid a few weeks of rumors that Apple is getting into the car business, the Wall Street Journal just added electric fuel to that fire by reporting Apple has several hundred employees working secretly towards creating an Apple-branded electric vehicle, according to people familiar with the matter. The project is codenamed Titan, and it will have according to the rumor, an initial design that resembles a minivan, which is awesome for those of us who don't remember what life was like before our minivans. We've invited Seth Weintraub, publisher and editorial director at 9to5Mac and founder of Electric Co., a site that covers electric transportation and the green ecosystem. Welcome, Seth. Thank you so much for having me. So have you had time to digest this news? Do you think all of these rumors are going to eventually add up to an Apple car? It would be something else, really. It would be, you know, Apple building a car would be, like, kind of out of this world. Um, you know, Tesla's obviously gathered a lot of attention for their, their uh, you know, it, it's, it's an amazing car that they've built. Um, but, you know, put Apple's resources behind it and, and Apple's money and, and uh, their style and their design. And, you know, put that up against Tesla and now you've got a game, you know. Right. So this morning, uh, in case for those people who haven't been following this story all day like I have, Apple hired the head of Mercedes-Benz Research and Development back in September. And we got that news today. He was to lead the newly formed Mac Systems Engineering team. That was according to the Financial Times and confirmed on LinkedIn. Now, this is just one of the series of clues over the past weeks that would lead people to believe that an Apple car is in our future. Uh, but I, I don't know. Do you think it's still just a rumor? Uh, I th well, I think it's more than a rumor uh, that people are working on some sort of vehicle. Um, it could be an exploratory phase right now. Um, it's, you know, whatever they're working on may not turn out to be the best thing ever. And so maybe they won't go into it. But, um, you know, Apple's got a lot of money. They've got a lot of smart people and uh, they've got some good direction. Uh, and, you know, we know the people at the top, um, Eddie Q, Bill Schiller, um, Johnny Ive. They're all car nuts. Uh, I think Eddie Q is on the board of Ferrari. So we know that the people at the top of Apple are interested in cars. Um, we know that they have the technology, the the electric, um, you know, obviously they know their batteries. Uh, they had a guy who just went to Tesla, uh, uh, Doug Field, who actually gave me a ride in a Tesla a couple <laughs> months ago, um, who came from Segway. So... I think The Verge uh, said something about a, you know, tricycle that Apple was working on, you know, like the last mile kind of small device. So who knows what's going to happen, but the fact that Apple's in the space is just going to blow it up. Right. I mean, that, yeah, the, the Verge was saying that maybe it was some kind of vehicle, not necessarily a car. I, I don't know. Um, it's interesting to, to it's, it's mostly just conjecture at this point but if you had to hazard a guess and they were working on a car would you have any guess of what a timeline would be like for that well so i mean the, the best thing we can do is look at tesla tesla uh, is almost a decade in from its founding so or maybe even over a decade um so that's a long timeline now assuming apple's got a lot more resources they can skip some of the steps um tesla's already you know done some of the work that they can kind of stand on those shoulders so, you know, maybe three or four years uh, at, at the best, but three or four years in car time is pretty quick. Like you're, uh, if Chevy wants to change something in their cars, it takes a couple of years for them to do so because they have to 
uh, redesign the assembly line, test it. Um, the the highway safety board has to approve everything. It's it's not like computers where a new one comes out every couple of months. Right. So now Thanks. your your uh, site is based on a lot of rumors, but they are almost always true. You guys don't usually report things that are just wildly off base. Now, do you think that this was something that uh, Tim Cook wanted to be revealed today, or do you think it was a leak? Um, it's a good question. You know, it's hard to tell with Apple. Sometimes they uh, sometimes they tell people, you know, hey, you should look over here about, you know, about this kind of thing. And, and the Wall Street Journal is... is often led in the right direction often. So it's possible that this is a retaliation for uh, the earlier Bloomberg report that uh, that quoted Elon Musk saying that Apple was trying to lure all their engineers over with quarter million dollar bonuses and, and that kind of stuff. So we don't know what's going on behind the scenes, but what we do know is that there is some sort of Apple car work being done. Right. Yeah, that was Elon Musk said, you know, all these people are coming over from Apple and no one's going the opposite way, which isn't actually true, right? No, no, we can tell from LinkedIn, which is actually kind of surprising. Like, you know, this guy who came over from Mercedes and was working on drivetrains is now working on Macintoshes. Seems a little, you know, zany to put it mildly, but I'm surprised Apple even lets people upgrade, update their LinkedIn when they come over. They should... You know, if they're really trying, if they really, really, really want to keep this secret, they should just say, don't update your LinkedIn. Right. I mean, we've found a lot of things. That's what happened with the Google getting into insurance. It was based on someone's LinkedIn profile change that right. they were. It's very strange that, that companies are okay with these guys just putting it out there publicly that they're now doing this or now doing that. Right. So uh, you run the site, is it Electric or Electric Co? Electric and the the the... Top level domain is dot co because somebody didn't want to give up com. <laughs> so, so what do you do on that site? So we cover two things. We cover electric cars, and that's mostly Tesla right now, um, just because that's where the interest is and that's where the innovation is. And then we also uh, strive to cover how do we get electric into your car without destroying the environment with coal and whatever. So that that's wind and solar. So you know. Elon Musk, obviously, with the Solar City and the uh, Tesla, is a, a big focus of the the site. Right. Well, cool. So uh, the other story today was the combination Mattel Google toy. You also run Nine to Five uh, Toys, also. So you were reporting this. Uh, can you tell us a little bit about that news? Yeah, and, and Nine to Five Google too. So everything, every base has been covered right now. <laughs> yeah. And I spent I spent the morning in New York at Mattel. Or well, at at their their showroom, um, there's there's a toy convention going on in New York City right now. Um, Google, which um, at their I/O convention last June, uh, as almost as an afterthought, released a product which was the product of uh, a couple of engineers' twenty percent time, which is their extra time, and um, it looks kind of like a, an Oculus if it was made out of cardboard. And for a screen, you actually just shove your smartphone in there. And it turns out that this is actually pretty cool. And if you put one on and, and uh, you know, I have one and my kids love it, um, you can kind of zoom around in 3D worlds and do all kinds of cool stuff. And developers have jumped on board and it's kind of blowing up a little bit. It, strangely, this little piece of cardboard is doing much better than Google Glass, which is a, you know, $1,500 piece of very high tech equipment. Right. And how much is the Google Cardboard? The Cardboard... Uh, it, it's actually a kit. You can make it for nothing. But uh, third parties like Dodo sell it for like 20 bucks or something. Mm, already made. And, right. So Mattel is releasing a plastic version of this. Um, and they're they're going to have that looks like their old. Uh, uh, what are the viewfinder? Um, viewfinder. Right. Or yeah. So and they have the, the little cartridges that you can point it at. And um, it works kind of like the old viewfinders do. But. Um, obviously this is 3d immersive worlds and, and all kinds of cool modern technology. And they're going to sell that for $30, which, you know, seems like a no brainer to me. Right. Well, you know, we probably the hollow lens will be pretty far off. That's the Microsoft's yeah. augmented reality. And that will probably cost more than $34. I'm guessing. I'm going to guess you're right. 
<laughs> so you tried it. I mean, is it is it anything like the Oculus or is it, I mean, your kids it's like it, like, you said. It's not like Oculus and they were kind of proud of that because, you know, the Oculus, you're wearing it, you're immersed, people are getting like seasick in it. This is something you t put on, take off really quickly. If kids don't like it, they take it off. It's just held up to their eyes like it, like the old viewfinder. So um, it's a, they want they want to like differentiate it from Oculus in a big way. Um, it's very portable. Um, they they're going through all kinds of um, kids doctors to make sure that it, it doesn't affect them in in harmful ways. So it's Mattel being Mattel and uh, trying trying to get it to a, a, a mass audience. Right. And so this will be available in the fall, they said. Yeah, I think they're trying to hit Christmas. And and what's interesting, uh, the news that they wouldn't say directly is that um, they expect it to be on iOS, so iPhones as well. Um, but And they, they are only going to work on cardboard. So I asked them point blank, are, you know, are you thinking about Oculus? Are you thinking about Microsoft? Like, no, we're going Google Cardboard. And I was like, so Cardboard's going to be on iOS. And they're like, Nope, can't say that. But we're going to be on iOS and we're going to be on cardboard. So, you know, the transitive property of uh, of products means that cardboard is coming to iOS by Christmas. Oh, interesting. Well, thank you so much. I know it's evening there on the East Coast. I appreciate your time, Seth. Thanks for coming well, thanks on. Thanks so much. That was Seth Weintraub, editorial director at all the 9 to 5 sites and at Electric. Now, in other Apple news, the App Store made headlines this week, first by promoting games without in-app purchases in a new section in the App Store. We've invited Brad Charcos, news editor at PC World, Mac World, and Tech Hive, and Greenbot, to talk about this move. Are you there, Brad? Hey, how's it going? So, in the off chance that there's someone out there who doesn't know what a freemium, freemium game is, can you explain real quick what they are? Sure. So a freemium game is a game that you can download for free. Um, and then the way they make money is either through ads or more often by uh, in-app purchases. So they'll lock a level or they'll make it so you can only play X amount of time before you have to buy to continue playing the game. So everyone is annoyed by this, even as you told me, your four-year-old daughter who loathes oh, she freemium it. games. She hates it. Yeah. You know, when she's playing a game, you know, rocking along, having fun, and all of a sudden it's like, boop, nope, can't play again for another two hours. I mean, nothing. I worry for my phone going through a window at those times. <laughs> so so what the App Store is doing is showing you games that don't do this, games that you have to pay for. And they range, the, the games in this section range in price from $1.99 to how how high are some of these games? Um, Most of them are in the 3 to $5 range. I mean, there's some that are more expensive, but... You know, those are like huge full-fledged games. Right. Uh, and so why do you think Apple is doing this? Why do you, why do you think they're promoting these games? Um, well, I'm not Apple, but uh, there has been a huge amount of freemium games coming out recently. Freemium is what everybody's releasing these days. You see the ads on the Super Bowl about, you know, whatever. Clash of Clans. Uh, the, war, uh, the war game yeah. with uh, Clash of Clans. Cl oh, <laughs> not Clash of Clans. Yeah. Yeah, but all these games, you know, they're freemium. They're all coming out freemium. And as I said, some people just aren't interested in that. So I think this is just them trying to appeal to the people who aren't interested in, you know, freemium games and just saying, hey, there are games that you don't have to put up with all that. And here's where you can find it. I think it's just them scratching, you know, a uh, uh, niche itch. Well, it's interesting because, I mean, people complain about downloading expensive games. I know the game Monument Valley. I love that game. My kids love it. Um, and it's short. It doesn't take that long. So a lot of people complain about the price. But when you compare it to like a cup of coffee, which is often the same price, that doesn't last very long either. So what's going on here? Yeah, these things cost money to make. And, you know, people expect to make money back from them. Uh, Monument Valley is a short game, but they put out stats recently and it cost them hundreds and hundreds of thousands of dollars to make over many, many months. So, I mean, the money has to come from somewhere. Right. And it's either through paying for the game straight up or putting up with this freemium stuff, the locked content and the extra content and whatnot. Right. It's sort of that endless battle that's been going on, you know, forever since the Internet. Just everything was free and then everybody has to figure out a way to make money. Yep. 
So the, the App Store was also in the news uh, about something else today. Sarah Perez of TechCrunch reported that at the same time that the App Store has started actively banning games that have screenshots, screenshots that depict guns, they're also now allowing apps that help people find pot. Now, I'm not taking a stance on guns or pot, but I think it's worth discussing. The App Store now makes more than Hollywood, so it's important that we pay attention to these decisions. What, what do you make of these two decisions? Um... I don't have deep-seated issues with either of them. Um, in the case of the pot apps, um, particularly uh, Mass Roots is the one Sarah Perez was talking about. Uh, it, the way that it works is they finally allowed the app back into the store, but it has to do a geolocation check with your GPS. And if you're not in a state where pot isn't legalized, then you can't use the app. So which it's, I, so, pardon me, go ahead. So it's not just that you can't download it. If you've already downloaded in a state where, it's, where pot is legal and you go to a state that it's not, is that the way it works? Yeah, it has to do a geolocation check. Mm -hmm. So if you're in a place where pot, you're not allowed to have pot, then you can't use the app. Mm -hmm. But if you're in one of the states where pot is legalized, then you can use the app all that you want. Mm -hmm. Well, that makes sense then. Which, yeah, I think it's a pretty, you know, pretty fair approach. I mean, it's, uh, you know, a contentious issue, sure, you know, drug use, but it's one that different states are coming down in different places. And I think this is a pretty fair way to handle it. So now, uh, has the rule about screenshots and guns always been there? Or is it a case of them just starting to enforce it? Um, well, Apple hasn't come out and said anything officially about the screenshots and guns. Uh, Pocket Gamers in particular has found several developers who report that they have been asked to do this because uh, screenshots have to be, you know, rated for ages four plus because they appear everywhere in the App Store. Like I was saying, my daughter picks up my phone and goes through it. It's the same deal with these. Mm -hmm. uh, and that requirement has been around for a long time. And if they are indeed starting to crack down on that now, it seems like it's just them getting tougher about that. Right. And so, I mean, a Apple has made a lot of these decisions they've had to because they review all the <clears> apps <throat> as opposed to, you know, other like Google Play and other stores. So um, do you, for you, is this a fair trade? Um, It's their store. They can do what they want. I mean, if you're going to have a curated app store and one that's family friendly, which is kind of the uh, appeal of, you know, one of Apple's we're good for the whole family, you know, part of their marketing, part of their, you know, whole thing. Um, I think this falls right into that. I don't have any deep-seated issues with it. I mean, it's just the logo for the game. Mm -hmm. It's just the screenshots for the game. They're not actually banning any content within the game, it sounds like. It sounds like they're just saying, hey, come back with uh, something that doesn't have a picture in the middle of our app store or someone pointing a gun at somebody's face. Right. So just in case anyone was worried that we're only going to talk about Apple today, the website Sam Mobile reported that the Galaxy S6 will come with apps like Microsoft OneNote, OneDrive, Office Mobile with a free Office 365 subscription, and Skype. Uh, what do you think about that? You also write content about Android and PCs. What do you think about mm -hmm. this announcement? Um, I think it's pretty interesting if it's true. Uh, I'm not sure about the veracity of it. It was from Sam Mobile saying, hey, this one guy told us this. <laughs> Uh, but if it is true, uh, it's very interesting because it plays right into a lot of things that Microsoft's been going on recently uh, with as far as, you know, they're broadening their horizons, trying to push their services more. That's, you know, part of the whole thing of Windows 10 is there is more of a platform than standalone OS now. It's like, hey, here's our platform for OneDrive and blah, blah, blah. Mm -hmm. And uh, <clears throat> this report makes it sound like uh, Samsung is going to be putting OneDrive and Microsoft Office and you know, OneNote and everything inside of their Galaxy S6. Um, so this plays heavily into that. It also, uh, recently Microsoft invested in uh, Cyanogen as well, as rumored. Mm -hmm. And uh, Bloomberg said that part of the reason they did that was to try to get their services into those phones as an alternative to Google. Right. So it's really interesting from that angle. It's also very interesting to see, uh, again, if this is true, uh, that Samsung, you know, kind of splitting from Google a little bit. I mean, because you got to imagine they wouldn't be too happy with, uh, you know, Samsung filling up the Galaxy S6 full of Microsoft services. Right. As opposed to the stuff that <laughs> the other Galaxy phones have been filled up with. I mean, I had an S3 and an S5, and it just had so much <sighs> bloatware. And I don't know, <sighs> did you ever use any of, like, the S Health or the S... Oh, I never used any of it. It was just a pile of junk. It's just Microsoft services would have to be better. Yeah. 
<laughs> yeah, and it was but stuff they, that you couldn't, sometimes there was a lot of stuff you couldn't even uninstall. Yeah, there was to. all the stuff you couldn't delete. It was, there was an abundance of it and none of it I ever used. <laughs> So, so, so why? So we talked a little bit about why Microsoft is doing this, but is it partly? I mean, is this sort of an admission that the Windows Phone is not getting any more successful than it has been? Um, I don't know if that's necessarily the case. I think they're making a big push for it with the new Windows Ten. Windows Ten Preview just came out uh, for phones. Mm -hmm. uh, I think it's more playing into since that you know, that Nadella took over. They're uh, you know pushing the services real hard, pushing you know mobile first, cloud first. And this plays right into that. But whereas before they would, you know, kind of lock down all their best stuff to Windows, now it's going everywhere. And they're trying to get their services in front of everybody. Right. And it seems to be working out well for them. And this seems to me, again, if this is true, to just play into that. Right. Well, we don't have too long to find out. They'll unveil the S6 at Mobile World Congress on March 1st, yeah. I believe. So, Will, do you think you'll get one? Um, not personally. I like uh, smaller phones. <laughs> I have a Moto X right now, so. Well, cool. Well, thank you, Brad. Brad, you're, uh, tell me all the sites that you do the news for. Uh, well, I'm primarily a senior editor at uh, PC World, but in the mornings I also help oversee the coverage at uh, Macworld, TechHive, and GreenBot. Great. And people can uh, see what you're interested in on Twitter at, at Brad Charcos. Yep. Oh, great. Yep. Most, most a lot of video game stuff. Awesome. Thank you so much. Yep. Pleasure. Thanks for having me. Coming up, Obama signs a cybersecurity executive order, and one internet pioneer says we're headed to the digital dark ages. But first, this episode is brought to you by NatureBox. Right now, NatureBox is giving you a chance to get a complimentary trial box of their most popular snacks, and you just pay $2 for shipping. Life is hectic, and it's hard to make the best snacking choices. When you're looking for a quick pick-me-up, do what I do. Get delicious, healthy snacks at naturebox.com. Naturebox has hundreds of delicious, nutritionist-approved snacks. They've got zero artificial flavors, colors, or sweeteners, zero grams trans fat, and no high fructose corn syrup. You'll even find snacks with the bold flavors you crave. So in the afternoon, when you're hungry, do what I do. Grab Asiago and cheddar cheese crisps or sour cream and onion almonds or blueberry Greek yogurt pretzels. You know you're going to snack. Get smart about it with NatureBox. Start your trial today and get a complimentary sampler box at naturebox.com slash twit. Stay full, stay strong, start snacking smarter. Go to naturebox.com slash twit and we thank NatureBox for their support of Tech News Tonight. And now on to a few more stories we're following today. Earlier this week, we reported that President Obama planned to sign an executive order to encourage cybersecurity threat information sharing between the private sector and government agencies. Today at the first ever cybersecurity summit at Stanford University, Obama signed that order. Representatives from tech companies as well as various government agencies were there, including the FBI. Apple CEO Tim Cook was there speaking, and he warned of the dire consequences in sacrificing privacy in the name of cybersecurity. I think he also said it was a matter of life and death. Facebook CEO Mark Zuckerberg, Yahoo CEO Marissa Mayer, and Google's Larry Page and Eric Schmidt all declined their invitations to attend the event. And finally, speaking at the American Association for the Advancement of Science today, Internet Pioneer and Google Vice President Vince Cerf warned of a digital dark age, saying that future generations will have little or no record of the 21st century. Cerf is talking about the fact that technology is moving so fast that the way we create content right now will likely be will mean that we will likely be unable to access it in the future. You know how, like, my parents can't make me watch the slides from their honeymoon in 1969 anymore because I destroyed their slide projector? Now, Surf's solution is something he's calling digital vellum. Here's how it works. Take an X-ray snapshot of the content and the application and the operating system together with a description of the machine that it runs on and preserve that for long periods of time. This digital snapshot, Surf says, will recreate the past in the future. And maybe that means I'll have to watch those slides from their honeymoon again, but I hope not. And that's it for this edition of Tech News Tonight. Subscribe to the show at twit.tv slash TN2. 
Write to us at TN2 at twit.tv and watch live every weekday at 4 p.m. Pacific. And don't miss our morning news program, Tech News Today, every weekday at 10 a.m. Pacific, 1 p.m. Eastern. I'm Megan Maroney. Thanks for watching. Bandwidth for Tech News Tonight is brought to you by Cashfly.com.